today as we honor them. Mr. Johnny, will you have a prayer for us, please? Mr. Johnny Watts, will you pray for us, please? Amen. Good morning. If you'll stand with me as we have our call to worship this morning, and it will also be our offertory hymn. So as we um, finish it, if our offering bearers will come forward. It will be 705 in your hymn book. It is well with my soul. We'll sing the first and the last.
Dawson, Brady, and Jake, these past five years have flown by. I mean, it seems like yesterday, y'all were my seventh graders sitting over there. I mean, it's, it's flown by. Um, as Miss Katie says, the older you get, the years go by a lot faster than they do. But anyhow, it has been a privilege to watch y'all grow into fine young men. Um, and I'm so very proud of each of you. And I know God has great plans for each of you. Um, I've always told all of you that um, the younger kids look up to you. I've always told the kids that. They look up to my older kids. And speaking as a mama, that I have one of those younger kids, um, I couldn't ask for any finer boys for Sage to look up to. Um, Brady with his quiet dependability, Dawson with his leadership, and Jake with that never-ending smile. Y'all are some fine Christian young men, and your parents have done an excellent job at raising you. And y'all have every right to be proud parents because they are some fine young men. Dawson will be going on to Meridian Community College, Brady to Colin, and Jake to South Alabama. Um, and with the kids looking up to y'all, that speaks volumes of, of y'all. Of y'all y'all take up time with them. Y'all don't exclude them. I mean, y'all look to these younger, all these kids look up to y'all. And I'm very proud of y'all. So as we honor y'all today, I want to just share a few things with you as you begin your next chapter in your life. Um, remember what you have been taught. Um, your parents have done a great job at raising you by teaching you about God and making sure you are at church. Take that with you. Um, and some scripture that goes along with that is Psalms 119, 105 that says, how can a young man keep his ways pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart, I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. Proverbs 1, 8 through 9. Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and forsake not your mother's teaching, for they are graceful garland for your head and pendants for your neck. Proverbs 23, 18 through 19. Surely there is a future, and your hope will not be cut off. Hear, my son, and be wise, and direct your heart in that way. Isaiah um, 40, 31. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not be faint. And Colossians 2, 6 through 7 says, Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. You have been taught all these things. Remember what you have been taught. The second thing is be happy in the Lord. God loves you. He wants the very best for you in this life. Um, in Psalm 37, 4, one of my favorite verses, it says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Know God. Be happy in the Lord. Um, Psalms 126, 3 says, The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Just look at all around and see what all God has done for you guys. Y'all have been blessed. Jeremiah, I mean... Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your understanding, on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Trust in his will for your life. Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. When we're grounded in Christ, he is there as always. Philippians Philippians 4.4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. In Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, work heartedly as for the Lord and not for men. Whatever you do, do it as you're working for God in every situation in your life whether it's sports, whether it's work, whether it's school, whatever. Do it as you're doing for Christ. And the last one is walk forward in the Lord. Seek him and trust him for your life. Remember, God's dreams for you are bigger than the dreams that you could ever dream for yourself. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Philippians 1, 6, and I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Christ, of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1, 
9 through 10. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Philippians 3, 13 through 14 says, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of Christ Jesus of God in Christ Jesus. And, Philipp, and Colossians 1, 9 through 10 says, And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all his spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. So I walk forward in the Lord. Um, Stay grounded in him when you go to college. Get involved in the VSU. Find a church. And I have full faith that all three of you will do that. And I know that um, you will excel in this next chapter of your lives. And I'm very extremely proud of you and can't wait to see what God has in store for each of you. Um, and what you will accomplish for him. And in closing, I want to leave you with this thought. Take pride in how far you've come. Have faith and how far you can go, but don't forget to enjoy the journey. I love y'all. If you will join us in singing our next hymn, please stand. It's going to be hymn number 147, How Great Thou Art. We'll sing the first and the last. Wow, what a day. Can you believe it's almost here? Graduation. But you know, you guys, um, 
you are. Uh, I agree with Stephanie. Y'all, y'all some pretty, pretty good guys, fine young men. I would definitely say. Uh, y'all have a special place um, in, in my heart, uh, Brady, um, Tim, and Rochelle, and, and y'all's family uh, was some of the first friends when Christy and I went into the ministry and, and moved to Lucian. Uh, they, they were some of our first friends and, and have been a part of my life and my uh, ministry life um, the whole time. And so uh, I appreciate y'all and, and love y'all and, um, and that's special to me, you know. Um, you know, they, uh, I know they used to think when my kids were rolling under the pews at Lucian. I don't know if you... Uh, Paid them back well enough, Brady, uh, for for some of those things. But um, but I remember when you were born, and Dawson, Dawson's first uh, baby, born at Friendship. Uh, when when I came to uh, Friendship, when Christy and I moved here uh, to be in the ministry, and and so and Jake didn't be too long after that. And uh, so so you guys, uh, I have been around since you were born, and have got have had the privilege to watch you grow up. You know, uh, we've had some great times. Uh, vacation Bible school. I remember y'all jumping around in here for vacation Bible school and us having having fun. Uh, youth trips that, that we've been on. Uh, kids camp. Hey, you can't forget kids camp, right? We have some great times at kids camp. I, I remember one particular kids camp. You know, I'm driving the bus and uh, and I think Jake, you're probably in the fifth or sixth grade about this time, some, somewhere in that neighborhood. And he sat behind me, you know, on the bus. And, uh, and we had po- a political conversation the whole way to kids camp. Fox News and, uh, and everything that was going on. I was like, man, uh, he knows what's going on in the world. He's a he's fifth, sixth grader. And, uh, and we, we've had some great times. And uh, Jake was one of the hiking buddies at Winter Extreme. We hiked up the mountain and climbed down the waterfall. And, and uh, Dawson and Brady, uh, we're doing recreation out here for Vacation Bible School, helping helping with recreation, and uh, and uh, we've had some great times, and, and it's been it's been a blessing watching you guys uh, grow up and uh, become the young men uh, that that you are. It's been a, it's been a joy, and I know God's got great plans uh, for you as well. Uh, so y'all are special uh, to me. Uh, your families are are special to me as well. And so I have a special message for you this morning. I got an hour for each one of you. So, uh, so we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. Can't cut you short, man. Can't cut you short. This is... So, uh, but, but we are. We, we're very, very proud of you. You know, as we think about graduation, and I think Stephanie even mentioned it, you know, one chapter of your life closes, as we often talk about, and, uh, and another chapter is open and right, and there's a lot of topics uh, that, that come to mind when we think about uh, graduation ceremonies, as, such as goals and dreams and uh, all those achievements and all those types of topics, but, but I want you to think about uh, this particular topic today, and that's the, that's the topic of success. Uh, what does it really mean uh, to be successful? You know, how, how does the world define success? You know, oftentimes when we think about success in the world, uh, we think about our accomplishments, our, the degrees that we have. Uh, we think about our achievements. And, and I know uh, y'all, y'all put a lot of y'all's accomplishments already out uh, for us to be able to, to see and and we're proud of those, and I know that you are and your families are, because even through high school, y'all have accomplished some, some great things already uh, in your life. And oftentimes we think, you know, in worldly terms, that, that that's success. Uh, and certainly uh, it, it is in the things that we do. But we often think about success in, in terms of positions of power or, or money or investments or, or even, um, you know, happiness, so to speak, being true to yourself, doing what you love, uh, all those types of things kind of come to mind when you think about worldly success. Uh, But that's not what I want to talk about today. I I don't want to talk about success from a worldly perspective. I want us to think about success more than just a self-centered perspective or a worldly view. What is success biblically? What is God's view of success uh, for your life and for our lives? Because ultimately, your life 
and who you are and the way that you're gifted. And y'all are some gifted young men. You, you really are. But the way that you are gifted in your life and, and your, your work and all of the things that you do, God has allowed you to do them for His purpose. For His purpose. And so success in your life, in your work, in your career, uh, whatever that it might be, comes from the fact that we were created by God and we were created for God. And so ultimately, our lives are to honor God and enjoy God and glorify God uh, through our lives. And that's really what purpose is all about. And um, when you come to Joshua chapter 1, you know, Joshua was in one of those moments in his life where he was starting a new chapter. He, he had been... Um, uh, Moses' apprentice, so to speak. He had worked alongside Moses uh, uh, all along the way. And now Moses was, uh, was going to be passing away. And Joshua was taking leadership over uh, this rough bunch of people called the Israelites. And he was supposed to be leading them to their purpose uh, in the promised land. And so he was beginning a new chapter. And this is what God told him. He said in Joshua 1.7, Be strong and very courageous, but be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it then you will be prosperous and successful. So notice that what God told Joshua is that success from a biblical perspective, a worldly perspective, is directly tied to God's Word. It's directly tied to God's purpose for your life, to who God calls you to be. Now, here we go. In school... Success is measured and recognized by grades and grade point averages, right? And you guys are Mississippi scholars, so y'all some smart, uh, y'all some smart young men. But biblical success in God's kingdom is measured in a different way. You see, God used farmers, He used fishermen, He used kings, He used priests, He used shepherds, He even used peasants to accomplish His purpose. He used educated people and uneducated people. He used King Solomon, and he used the shepherd Amos. He used Daniel, who was a royal official, and he used Peter, who was a fisherman. He used people from all walks of life in order to accomplish his purpose, and because they followed him by faith, they were successful. Now, I know you three guys have probably not seen any D's on your report cards. And I know that because you're alive today. I know your parents, and you probably wouldn't have made it to graduation if, uh, if you would have had some of those D's on your report cards. You're a smart bunch of guys. But today, today I want to give you permission to make D's the rest of your life. I want to encourage you to make some D's the rest of your life. And I want to share with you some D's in biblical success. And in the end, that's the only thing that matters. So the first D I want to talk to you about is the D of direction. Direction. Uh, Andy Stanley said, direction, not intention, determines destination. Direction, not intention, determines destination. So what's your destination? Well, think about it like this. We all use our GPS on our phones, right? So we're going to go somewhere. I know we went to the baseball game yesterday at North Forest High School. So boop, 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 boop. we punch North Forest High School in and hit it, and three different routes come up. And, you know, you got an hour and you know, 32 minutes, hour and 35, hour and 40, and it tells you those different routes. Well, as a Christian, that starting point is when you got saved. 
You know, you have that little arrow that says you're here, that starting point, and then you have the, the little arrow that's at your destination. And oftentimes in, in life, we look at it as, well, uh, my destination is, um, is this point. I graduate high school, or I graduate college, or I end up in my career. Well, no, that's not your destination uh, as a Christian. Your, your starting point is when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And, and one of the great privileges in my life is not necessarily all of the uh, things that we got to do as you grew up here at church. My, one of my greatest privileges is to have been able to walk through those waters of baptism with you. And that's the starting point of your Christian life. And, and the destination of your Christian life is Jesus. It's becoming like Him. He is the man that we are to be becoming like. And that's your destination. You see, there's different routes and there's different, different ways that we go about that direction. And God will take you down different paths in your life. But the ultimate destination is that you become like Jesus. That's your direction. And, and as young men, if you miss that, it doesn't matter where you go to college. It doesn't matter what degree you get. It doesn't matter whether you're a lawyer or you're a doctor or you're a physicist or whatever. If you miss your direction and you don't hit your destination to be like Jesus, that's not success in God's eyes. So remember, your direction is important. The next D I want you to think about is this. And that is the D of devotion. So you got direction, and then you've got devotion. So what is devotion? Devotion has to do with our heart. It has to do with our affection. It has to do with what we love. Because ultimately, what we love is going to motivate our direction. What we love is going to motivate what we pursue. Now, I know you guys, uh, you love sports. You all love baseball, and, and you love golf, and, and you love to run. I don't see how you run that much, son. Anthony told me how many miles you ran in a summer, and I, I about died. How can you still be living? That's like almost the whole United States of America you ran across. But you love to do that, and because you love to do it, you practice. You go to practice. You work. You train. Uh, you love to make good grades, so you apply yourself. You pursue what you love. And the Bible says that the thing that you are to love the most is God. Jesus said in Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven, 37, said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength, for this is the greatest and the most important commandment. And what Jesus means is this. God wants a personal relationship with you, not just religious activity. He, he doesn't want you just to be a church goer or just to be in a, a Christian group. God wants a relationship with you. He wants you to love Him with every part of your life, and He wants every part of your life to be an expression of your love for Him. Now, in John chapter 15, verse 4, Jesus put it this way. He said, Remain in me, and I in you, and you will bear much fruit. Remain in me, and I in you, and you will bear much fruit. And that word remain is also translated dwell. And it means to live. It means to make yourself at home, right? To make yourself at home. Now, there, there's a lie that we often tell uh, as Christians. And that's when somebody comes to our house, and, uh, and they're friends of ours, and, and, and we like them very much, and they come to our house, and we say this, make yourself, do you really mean that? <laughs> do, do, you, do we really mean that? I mean, you know, when you really get down to it, we, we might mean more like make yourself a room and get, you know, get comfortable, make yourself a little space and get comfortable. But we don't really mean, yeah, come on in and go through my fridge and get whatever you want or go get in my bed if you want to go get in my bed or go through my closets or go up into my attic. We don't really mean that, do we? When Jesus said, remain in me and I in you, he is saying, 
when you have a relationship with me, you're not just putting out the welcome mat. You do that when Jesus becomes your Lord and Savior. You put the welcome mat out and you welcome him into your life. But what Jesus is saying there, when you love God with all your heart, you are making Jesus at home in your life. You're giving him access and you're giving him authority to every room in your life, not just one little space. And so that everything that you do becomes about loving God. You do it as an expression to love God. And I want to challenge you to remember this. I know I'm going to throw a lot at you today, um, but I want to challenge you to remember this. To fulfill that command... Every day that you wake up, ask yourself, how can I express my love for God today? How can I express my love for God today? That's how you fulfill that command. The third thing I want you to see is this, is not only our direction in our devotion, but our duty, our duty. Uh, Now, we know that our direction is pursuing Jesus and becoming like Him, and our devotion is to love God with all that we are by making Jesus at home in our lives. But our duty comes out of our relationship with God, and here is our duty. Paul put it this way in Romans chapter 13, verse 8. Paul said, Do not owe anyone anything except to love one another For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For all of the commandments are summed up in this. Love your neighbor as yourself. For love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Your duty, no matter what your career path is, your duty is to love people as a Christian. And... and As soon as we grasp that and understand that, then we take that step in maturing to be who God wants us to be. As a matter of fact, Paul said of of all of his accomplishments, of all of the things that he did, Paul said, "If if I have not love, I'm nothing. If I have not love, I've accomplished nothing. So you can hang your wall with diplomas and you can hang your wall with accomplishments and you can hang... You could put trophies all over your shelves. You can have bank accounts and you can give so much money to missions here and so many organizations here, but if you don't do it out of love, it's not success in God's eyes. So what is love? Love's not a feeling. Biblical love is a verb. Love means that we are committed to an action that is in the best interest of another person. And so... When we're committed to an action that's in the best interest of another person, that's an act of love. And and therefore, we can love our enemies. We can love people that we don't necessarily know. We can love everyone when our goal is to do what's best for other people. That's love. Jesus kind of summed it up in a little different way. Jesus said in the golden rule in Luke chapter 7, Verse 12, Jesus said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. In other words, how are you going to take care of yourself? That's the way you take care of other people. And so when we think about it in those terms, that's success in God's eyes. Biblical success revolves around loving others and living by the golden rule and not your own rules in life. So the other question I want you to ask is this. As you wake up in the morning and you ask yourself, how can I express my love for God today? Then there's one other other question that naturally flows from that. How can I love the people that God puts in my life today? And if we understand those two things, we're going to grow to become more like Christ. How can I love God today, and how can I express my love for the people that God puts in my life today? The third D is this. So we got direction, devotion, duty. Now let's talk a little bit about determination. You know, there's one thing for certain in life, and you might not have gone through it yet, 
But there's one thing for certain in life. You're going to fail at something. <laughs> it's going to come at some point. There's going to be frustrations. There's going to be failures. Life will knock you down. It just will. Now, it might come in the most unexpected ways. It might not ever come through, through books and schoolwork. You might pass through that like a breeze, make great grades or whatever. But at some point, trials and troubles and temptations will come, and they will knock your feet out from under you. And that's just life. You know, it's going to happen. But as Christians, God allows it to happen because it's His purpose to refine us, to make us more like Jesus, and to keep us on the direction that He has us going. And so therefore, when those things come our way, and when life knocks our feet out from up under us, we get back up because faith says that we keep going. Faith says that we keep pursuing Jesus. Even if we have to redirect the route, we continue to pursue Him because that's our purpose. And in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36, it says, For you need endurance, is what He told the believers there. He says, You need endurance so that after you've done God's will, you will receive what is promised. You know, Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, and it is said that, that he made over 900 light bulbs that did not work before he made one that finally did. I'm kind of glad he did, aren't you? 900 times he went through all of the trouble to put together a light bulb to make the different changes that he needed to make to put together the light bulb and to flip the switch only for nothing to happen. Yet according to Edison, every time he made a light bulb that didn't work, he said that he found one more way not to make a light bulb. And eventually he flipped that switch, electricity poured into it, and it lit up. And the rest is history. That's why Jesus tells us as believers on our direction toward him that we ought to always pray and never give up determination. Don't quit on your faith. Don't quit on God's purpose in your life and never give in to a life of sin just because life has knocked you down. The last D is this. So we got direction, devotion, duty, determination, and the last D is delight. I love it that Stephanie put Put that verse in, uh, in her verses that she read to you. Delight. What you enjoy lights you up. Right? We talked to Jake about running. He lights up. He likes he like that. Talked to Dawson about golf or baseball and Brady about baseball. I got to talk to all y'all about things, you know. Y'all light up. Or other things, you light up because, because that's, what you, that's what you get joy from. Everybody wants to enjoy life, be happy, be satisfied, to be fulfilled. But many people take their delight in wealth or status or material possessions or other temporary things. And what they find out is those things can never truly satisfy. In Psalm 37, 4 and 5, it says, Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will act. Delight is about what you are pursuing with the desire to be happy, fulfilled, and satisfied. Now, does that verse mean that if you show up at church every Sunday, then God's going to just give you whatever you want? Well, no, it doesn't work that way. But here's what that verse means. When you find your joy, your satisfaction, and your fulfillment in being who God wants you to be and being where God wants you to be, then God will satisfy your life. That's where you will truly be happy. That's where you will truly be happy.
is when you're being who God wants you to be, where God wants you to be, and He is your delight. I've heard many stories through the years of faithful followers who have given testimonies and they said, I never thought I would be here doing this, serving the Lord in this way, but it is such a blessing and I'm so fulfilled and I'm so happy. Why? Because they made their delight the Lord. Now let's wrap it up with this. John C. Maxwell said, Most people have a desire to look at the exception instead of the desire to become exceptional. Most people have the desire to look at the exception instead of the desire to become exceptional. Well, my challenge to you, because I think you are some exceptional young men, my challenge to you is not to be successful or exceptional according to worldly standards. My challenge to you is to be successful and to be exceptional according to biblical standards. Direction, devotion, duty, determination, and delight. And you have my permission to make these deeds the rest of your life. And I hope that you will. Remember that success is not measured by the number of degrees on your wall, by the amount of money that you make, or all the material possessions that you have at the end of your life. Biblical success is found in the joy of serving the Lord and the rewards of living for Him. That's why God told Joshua, you keep this book near to your heart and your life, you will be prosperous and successful. Take delight in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Lord, thank you for these young men and the opportunity that we have, Lord, to to look at your word today and, and Lord, just to to pour into them and and to celebrate them as well. Lord, uh, we thank you for the blessing of their lives and uh, we pray for your guiding hand and for your grace over them, Lord, in the days ahead. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Guys, we do pray that you will always stand on God's promises. Join me in singing 410, Standing on the Promises. Things are changing, it seems strange and I need to figure this out You've got your life, I got mine But you're all I cared about Yesterday we were laughing Today I'm left here asking Where is all the time gone?
It's only for a moment you were mine to hold The plans that heaven has for you will all too soon unfold So many different prayers I'll pray for all that you might do But most of all I want to know you're walking in the truth and if I never told you, I want you to know That as I watch you grow I pray that God would fill your heart with dreams And that faith gives you the courage to dare to do great things So let my love give you roots And help you find your wings May passion be the wind that leads you through your days And may conviction keep you strong, guide you Everything I want is to you Never sleeping through From midnight till the morn I had to crawl before you walked Before you ran Before I knew it You were trying to free your fingers From my hand Cause you could do it on your own Now Somehow Slow down Won't you stay It's all too fast Let's make it last A little while I pointed to the sky And now you wanna fly I am your biggest fan I hope you know I am But do you think you can slow me down? Slow down to you every missing tooth and every bedtime story here's to barbie cars lightsaber wars sleeping in on sunday had to crawl before you walked before you ran before i knew it you were teaching me the only thing love can hold hands through it when it's scary you got me 
Let's make it last a little more. I pointed to the sky, and now you wanna fly. I am your biggest fan. I hope you know who I am. But do you think you can stop? Slow down. As thin as they can Cause it's all too All right, we would like to present you uh, with a gift at this time. So we'll call your name and you come up. And if you'll just remain standing once you get your gift. All right. So uh, Dawson Hester. <clears throat> uh, Brady Ratcliffe. Jake Thompson. All right, we can give these fine young men a hand. Guys, we would just like to um, have a prayer of blessing over you. And, and so would you stand with me as we pray for them? Heavenly Father, we just uh, bow before you today, maker of heaven and earth, and Lord, uh, our creator. You say in your word that you have knit us together in our mother's womb, and that you have planned our days from beginning to end, and Lord, we are created by you and for you. And Lord, I thank you for the special gift of these lives. Dawson and Brady and Jake. And Lord, I know that you have a plan and you have a purpose for them. And, uh, and Lord, you've already, Lord, uh, worked through their lives to be such a blessing, Lord. Not only to, to their own families, Lord, but Lord, to those they go to school with, their friends, and so many others, Lord. As these young men have, have served you and, and have lived for you, Lord, uh, uh, in in their high school days, and Lord, I thank you for that, and, and I thank you for the blessing that they are to our church and to our youth group, and Lord, I pray that, that you would just anoint them in a special way with your spirit, and Lord, just make them strong as, as they move forward to a new chapter of their lives, Lord, uh, just as Joshua moved forward, and Lord, uh, you told him to be courageous and to continue to follow your word, and you would prosper him. And Lord, I pray that uh, for them. 
I pray that they would take delight in you, Lord, and that you would give them the desires of their heart in the days ahead. And may the light of Christ shine through them. And Lord, may your kingdom be advanced because of them in the way that they serve you and the way that they live for you, Lord, for in, in, in uh, the future. So thank you, Lord, uh, for loving us and that we could share this time together today and be reminded of who you are and your purpose for our lives. And we ask these things in Jesus' name.